when you come to write your personal statement, I think being able to say you've been on some open days is a good thing. But I think it'll also give you the character of the places you might be applying to and the sort of angle you want to put in your personal statement. Nearly always when you go to an open day, you'll hear talks from people and very often they give away quite revealing things about the process as they do it and the emphasis that they place on different parts of the thing. For example, not all the dental schools in the United Kingdom use the UK CAP test. And I think it's a very good point of gamesmanship if you're trying to choose four places to apply to, to use at least one that doesn't use the UK CAP. Just in case you don't do as well as you thought you were going to, it gives you a fallback. Um, and also to find out what sort of emphasis they place. Some of them actually, for example, will score your personal statement and use that as part of the way they decide who to call for interview. I think if you know that you're applying to a school that scores the personal statement, then you obviously need to emphasise the things that, by going to an open day, you may have picked up they see as particularly important. And the thing I think for medicine and dentistry that people are always looking for is evidence of work experience. Now, some of them may ask for actual certificated evidence that you've done it, but most of them, at the moment anyway, just are going to be asking about it in the interview, obviously, if you get one, but will expect some description in the personal statement of the work experience. And I think it's worth, certainly, saying in what different settings you've done it, because ideally they'd want you to have done work experience in a number of different places, a number of different settings. So if you're applying for dentistry, a general practice, an orthodontist, perhaps a hospital environment, Obviously, this is the ideal situation, and I know it's terribly hard to get work experience, and sometimes people can only get it in one place. Even so, it's worth saying how much you've done. For example, just to say I have visited a dental practice, it could only be for two hours one afternoon. And that's probably going to be pretty obvious when you come for interview. So if you have only done a little work experience, you might as well admit it, but possibly say I am trying very hard to arrange further work experience and hope by the time of my interview I will have done this, this and this, and clearly if you do get an interview they'll expect you to have done it. But as well as what you've done and how much you've done and where you've done it, <coughs> I think what they're looking for most of all is what you got out of it. So simply listing the things you've seen, whilst that's sort of interesting, you could have got that out of a textbook. And, and I think what people are looking for is what the work experience did for you. After all, the reason they're asking you to do it is in order to see that you're really sure that you do want to be a dentist. It's going to be a long training, it's going to be hard work, it's going to be 40 years in a quite difficult environment, seeing people all day long. You've got to be really sure you want to put yourself in that situation. And I think what they're really looking for is some evidence that you've been and you've seen the good and bad side of dentistry, the upsides and the downsides, and you're aware of what people actually at the end of the day feel like as a dentist. They finish work and they say, oh, what a day. You know, or they say, yeah, that was really interesting, or whatever. Uh, but you've got to be able to, I think, understand the good and the bad things about it. So when you write your personal statement, I think they'll want not just these numbers. They'll want, I was really surprised how many patients were very anxious and how quite difficult it was to deal with them in some cases. Or I was very surprised how much technical side there was to dentistry and you know how much you had to know about metallurgy and materials and that sort of thing. Or I was really surprised how much communication skills were important because it was obvious that the good dentist was able to reassure patients in ways that weren't very obvious just by the manner and the way they spoke and what they did. So I think all those sort of things want to come through in your personal statement. What you must do is write it yourself. If I mean, we use plagiarism software now, if we detect plagiarism, if we find you've copied your personal statement off the internet, that's not going to look very good. If your father or auntie or someone is a dentist, please don't get them to write it for you because you might think it sounds good if they write it. It's going to be very obvious it's not yours, especially when you come to interview. Um, so write it yourself, even if it's not as perfect perhaps as it might be. If it's you and you're writing it and it's what you think and feel, that's really, really important. If you're lucky enough to get an interview, then first of all, you've probably got past the biggest hurdle because certainly at Barts and London, the majority of people who get past the hurdle of meeting their entry requirements, getting a good UK CAT score, and are offered an interview, they're pretty well on the way to being made an offer. So that's a, you want to first of all feel very positive about the situation because you're probably well over half the way to getting an offer, from us anyway, if you get as far as getting an interview, because we have maybe nearly a thousand applicants a year for dentistry and we would probably interview about 
150 or so. So if you've got down to being made an inter given an interview, then you're very well ahead in the game. So first of all, feel very positive. Obviously, there are going to be some people who we reject following the interview. And what we're really looking for at the interview, more than anything else, is, is enthusiasm. They've got to be enthusiastic about wanting to be a dentist. They've got to be very aware of the good and bad things as well. Be able to tell us something about the downsides as well as the upsides. And they've got to really, really want to do it. And not only that, for us to make them an offer, they've got to know something about our course and why they want to come to us. And frankly, sometimes people come in and they haven't done their homework and we want, we want to hear a little bit about what they've picked up about the East End of London, what it is to be do dentistry in Whitechapel, what particular things about our course are good and what interests them about the way we teach. And it's all there in the prospectus, frankly, and really all we're asking them to do is give it back to us to show that at least they have taken the time and trouble to read our prospectus and they genuinely do want to come to our institution because of the things that are different about it from somewhere else. All the schools use the UK GAT in a different way. Um, and I think, again, if you go to an open day, this is part of what I'm saying, go to use the open day not just to look around the place, but also to try and understand the emphasis that individual schools place on the different parts of the process. And as far as the UK CAT is concerned, as already said, it'll be very obvious from their website whether they use it or not, and there are some schools that don't. Um, but if they do, try and find out how they do it.